Hi, I'm Mike Geyer with Exceptional Water Systems. Today we're going to show you new technology designed for people that are allergic to swimming in a pool with chemically treated water, any type of chlorine, salt water, uh, any type of chemicals that you would normally add to a swimming pool. We're going to show you a little bit about the water, what it does to the water, how to check for it, how to test uh, to make sure that the system actually is running properly. We're going to show you a lot of different benefits to that as well. So first off, if you want to take a look, I've got a 25,000 gallon swimming pool here and uh, there is absolutely no chemicals in this water. Um, my dog loves to drink from it. Uh, I can feed my plants with it. There's numerous different things that uh, I can do with this water, but the only thing I have running on this particular pool is pure oxygen in there. So it's what we call ultra-fine oxygen bubbles. And there's literally, you can't see anything in there obviously, but I'm gonna show you that. Uh, there's billions upon billions of ultra-fine bubbles in there or oxygen bubbles. And I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. But nonetheless, you know, those of you that uh, really don't like to swim in a chlorinated environment, they don't want to swim in uh, chemically treated pools because you have skin issues, you have psoriasis, you've got eczema, you've got children with super sensitive skin. Uh, trust me, I have seven grandchildren, uh, six grandchildren anyways, one on the way. But nonetheless, I've got several grandchildren where they cannot swim in chlorinated water. So I understand what that's like. Uh, I don't want my family exposed to those type of chemicals and so forth, so I don't. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to show you how you can do that and how easy it is. So let's go back to the pump room and I'll show you what we got going. Okay, what we have here is known as aquafusion. And uh, what aquafusion does is actually diffuses either oxygen or oxygen and ozone into the swimming pool. So in this case, on my pool here, I have uh, just oxygen going in at this point. So this here, we use a medical grade type of concentrator. And what the concentrator does is it actually pulls in ambient air and it cleans that air. So it pulls out most of the nitrogen, some of the other uh, contaminants and so forth in the uh, air. And what it does is it, you end up with about 94 to 97% pure oxygen. We take that pure oxygen, we actually inject it through our system here and through this system on the output side, we're actually creating 100 million ultra-fine bubbles or oxygen bubbles per one milliliter of water. So they're super, super tiny. As a matter of fact, it falls under quantum physics, so you can't even see them. But we're going to show you how you actually measure that. So uh, putting the system in, if you want to know that the system is actually functioning, I know there's a lot of systems out there you can buy. and you really don't know whether they're functioning or not because there's no way of physically actually measuring the output of those particular systems. So we're going to show you actually how you measure how you measure that and how you would actually manage a pool without any type of chemical in there for swimming. So those of you that actually want to swim in the pool without any chemicals in there and so forth, we're going to show you actually how to measure that. So otherwise on this system as you can see it's very basic. Uh, I've got a 500 square foot cartridge filter. Uh, I've got a, just a variable speed pump. Now this particular system, I have it tied in. The only thing I have to program is the pump. The pump actually ties into what we call a pressure switch up here in the corner. So as soon as the system sees pressure, my concentrator automatically comes on so I never have to come back here and touch it. Um, that's my only operation. So no fancy chemical controllers or anything else if you're looking for just a basic type of system. This is as basic as it comes. Uh, obviously you can go with a, a non-variable speed if that which is that's what you chose, but nonetheless it's nice to have a variable speed to change your uh, flow rates and so forth. This system actually can run as low as about 45 to 50 gallons per minute and it goes all the way up to about 100. So anything in between there you're going to get plenty of ultrafine bubbles coming through that system. The other thing that I like to do is keeping the system as chemical free as possible or using as many natural chemicals I can to balance the water. Right behind me over here is a CO2 tank. So CO2 is used to manage the pH. So as your pH rises we actually feed CO2 and unfortunately here once again I'm going to manually feed this into the system. The CO2 tank 
uh, then as it's fed into the system, it forms, when it hits the water, it forms a, an acid called carbonic acid. And that carbonic acid is used to lower the pH levels in the water. Now, since it's a very mild acid, it does not hurt your alkalinity, which is a good thing. Uh, when you normally use muriatic acid, the muriatic acid will lower your alkalinity. So it keeps your pool more alkaline, it keeps it a lot healthier. And then once again, you're not adding TDS to the water, which is great. And, um, and you don't have to worry about any extra adverse type of chemicals and so forth in there. This particular bottle, this is 25,000 gallons once again. Uh, this bottle lasts me about a year because I'm manually adjusting it. Now I'm going to show you some other things fallacies in the industry and so forth things that you really don't have to worry about for say because you're not using chemicals and that's the important thing to understand is how to balance this water right below here is uh, the two chemicals I do use uh, when I need to and I'm going to show you when we, we would actually use these items calcium hypochlorite um, it's the next thing strongest to gas chlorine it's a very strong oxidizer it's about 68% uh, chlorine and the byproduct in there is calcium. I'm perfectly fine with that. Water uh, loves calcium and uh, that's not uh, an adverse uh, uh, byproduct to add for the water. The other thing I have here is a phosphate remover. Now this is the only phosphate remover I use and there's uh, several reasons behind it, this but this is made by Orenda and uh, it actually helps remove uh, some of the algae from the water. So despite the fact it is a phosphate remover, it works great. Um, I add this every so often, not like I should, but uh, as you can see, my pool does not have really algae in there, uh, but I probably haven't added it for a couple weeks right now. So this bottle will last me at least a month or more, maybe a couple months, uh, depending on how well I'm watching my water. So, but otherwise, we'll get into that here. But uh, let's go take a look at the pool and uh, we'll start some testing. Okay, next we're going to test the water. I'm going to show you how to test to make sure that the technology is actually working. Uh, we also want to get some general, um, general parameters on there, know what the pH is. Uh, I do also want to show you that there is actually no uh, sanitizer in the water. And uh, also what the clarity is and how we actually uh, monitor our water and how we're actually going to watch it on a regular basis and when we need to treat or not treat. So this guy right here is uh, what they know is a dissolved oxygen meter. So you have a probe that comes with it. These meters go anywhere from a couple hundred dollars all the way up to a couple thousand dollars. This one's actually about mid-range. Uh, this is about a thousand dollar meter here. So. We want to have a, a good meter because we do a lot of testing with it. So nonetheless, you can see here, ambient air is almost seven parts per million, which is about average. So technically water normally has a little bit less than ambient air. And uh, as you can see, this is kind of going back and forth on the percentage. I'm gonna, just gonna recalibrate that real quick. All right, so we're sitting at just a little over 100%. It's gonna settle down here just a little bit. So we're sitting at roughly about seven parts per million. So this bucket of water I just grabbed from my tap water. So it's something that comes out uh, of my uh, spigot on the side of the house. And the reason why I say that is because I actually have a home filtration system, which would actually be a different amount of oxygen after I run it through the whole system so I want to have just a normal tap water straight from the city uh, to measure on here so let me drop this in here just to give you an idea this is the same water that I use to fill my pool with and we're still sitting still at about seven and a half parts per million of oxygen I'm gonna take a look at that just, just a little over 7, 7.75, okay, so not a whole lot of oxygen in that water. Now let's take a look at my pool. As you can see, the system is not running right now. Um, I only run it in the morning for about, 
about three, four hours in the morning, and then I run it for like another three hours in the afternoon. So it'll be coming on here probably in another couple hours, and it'll run for about another four hours. So let's see where we're at here. Now, if you can see on there, oxygen in my pool is 17. So it's over twice as much oxygen and the system is not even running. But as you can see, it's still kind of going up there, 18. And as the pool gets actually colder in the winter time or when it's running, it'll run about 19 uh, all the way up to 25 parts per million, depending on the number of gallons you have in the pool and as well as any type of aeration you have taking place. So it looks like we're about 18 parts per million in there. As you can, sh as you can see on the percentage, it's about 220% saturation. So I got quite a bit of oxygen in there. So the next thing I wanna show you is the pH. pH in the pool is obviously very important uh, for a number of reasons. Um, if you went out to a natural body of water and you tested the pH from a stream, from a, a lake or so forth, you'll probably have about anywhere from 8 to 8.5 part uh, pH. And that's normal. So no different. I don't necessarily need to have a low pH in this water. As you can see, the water is crystal clear. And uh, let's see where our pH is at. Too much. All right. And what we're using here, standard test kit, you can find at pretty much any pool store. Um, this one actually has pH, chlorine, calcium, alkalinity, and stabilizer. So, let's see where our pH is. Switch hands. I got five drops. Just make sure we mix this well. And if we look into that, definitely see well over eight. So my pH is over eight parts per million. Okay, next we're going to test uh, the chlorine in the water. So obviously we want to show you that there is actually no sanitizer in the pool whatsoever. Uh, so let's do a test on that. Once again, I'm using a standard test kit that you can get uh, from pretty much any pool store. Um, one thing I do like using is what they call DPD powder. DPD powder actually immediately shows you if there's any sanitizer in the water. <coughs> so the DPD powder, DPD powder is actually um, tells you whether there's sanitizer in the water immediately. So you take two scoops of this stuff here, and if there's any sanitizer present in the water, it'll immediately turn pink or red. And as we mix our solution here, as you can see, there is actually no chlorine in the water, so there's no sanitizer in this pool. 
okay? And of course, anytime you're done testing, I'd highly suggest, unless you're gonna drink this, don't throw it back in the water. Okay. Okay, next we're gonna show you why we'd actually treat for this and uh, things to look at in here. So first off, obviously, one thing is uh, water clarity we wanna look at. So honestly, right now, I, I really wouldn't do a whole lot to my pool. I would probably let it go. Uh, the water looks beautiful. It is, to me, for my normal water quality, um, it does have a, it is slightly cloudy to me. Uh, that's only because I know that the pH is high um, and I can see it in there. Normally it is actually crystal clear and if I do drop the pH, once again, this is just a personal thing, uh, but if I do drop the pH, I will get yet another level of clarity in my water. So, but I'm fine with it. I'm not swimming in it or anything, and it's uh, it's perfectly fine right now for watching it on a daily basis. So the only other thing I'm going to look for in here is um, algae. Now, if you can see around the sides here in the grout lines, um, I do have a little bit of algae. I do have a little bit of uh, yellow algae. <coughs> see it there so you can see the little bit of algae I do have in my water and uh, just in a few spots around the pool so I'm not terribly uh, worried about it but if I do want to treat for it so it doesn't get worse um, I can go ahead and do that now so going back to the product I was talking to you earlier about which is my phosphate remover now, since I'm not swimming in this, and I'm not going to be swimming in this anytime soon, I'm going to go ahead and add in maybe about four ounces, five ounces of, of this guy to the water. And as soon as I add this in there, here's another thing. You'll see the pool actually get cloudy. So depending on how long your cycles are, if you're running it for eight hours a day, ten hours a day, the longer you run it, the quicker you're actually going to filter this stuff out of the pool. So basically this almost acts like a uh, clarifier. It's basically just flocking together all the phosphates and so forth and that's going to pull that out of the water. I carefully measured that uh, coming out of the bottle there. So as you notice, as soon as we added the uh, phosphate remover, you can take a look probably over here you can see it's really really starting to milk up the water. What that means is that I have a lot of phosphates in my water, so which means I have a lot of food for algae to grow. Algae by itself needs both phosphates, nitrates, and depending on how much carbon is in the water, uh, will depend on how quickly your algae is going to spread throughout your pool. So, but nonetheless, as we said earlier, I've got a ton of ultrafine bubbles in here. There's a ton of oxygen in this water, way, way over normal levels. And uh, algae just doesn't grow and it doesn't move quite as fast as it does in a, normally, uh, a normal body of water. So with that in mind, I also have a little bit of uh, Cal Hypo from the back here. So as you can see, this is an eight ounce cup and I don't have it quite full. There's just a little bit in there. So it's about a half a cup. So I'm just going to sprinkle this around just in the areas I need it. I'm not going to just throw it in the pool in the center and expect it to actually kill all the algae on the walls and so forth because that would take a lot of chlorine to do so. I don't want to swim in a lot of chlorine so if I did want to take a swim either tomorrow morning or later on this afternoon I don't want to swim in chlorine so what I'm going to do is just sprinkle this around the edge of the pool just where the, just where the uh, algae is present and that's it. So.
Okay, now that we've treated the water, as you can see, the water's actually going to be a little cloudy depending on how much phosphates you actually have in the water. So, in this case, my water is not too bad. It did start clouding up a little bit, uh, so it shows me that my phosphates were not that high. Now, granted, I could do a phosphate test kit on there and see what my phosphates truly are at. If I was to take a, kind of a wild guess in there, I'd probably say they're probably three or four hundred. And the only reason why I say that is because it didn't get too cloudy. Sometimes if you've got a lot of phosphates in your water, your water's going to just really, really haze up. Number, the other thing is, is how much phosphate remover you actually add to the water will make a huge difference in how much, I don't know, how much, how cloudy it's going to get. So that's the other thing. So nonetheless, uh, the only other thing I'm really worried about on here or what I'm going to watch is because I'm using a granular, sometimes you can see that white stuff floating on the top. That's just the chlorine that has not dissolved into the water. As soon as all of that stuff is off the water and as soon as my water turns clear, once again, it's all based on the number of hours that you're actually running your system. So in this case, when you treat, if you want to run it for a little bit longer to get that stuff out of there and so forth, and be able to get all the rest of the cloudiness out, go for it. Not a big deal, it just helps you clean up your swimming pool prior to actually being able to swim in it again. But nevertheless, I'm gonna give this a couple days and uh, I'm not gonna be using it anyways. Um, come back and uh, I'll start swimming again. Thanks for watching the video, we appreciate it. If you're interested in uh, knowing more about the technology and so forth, you can look, it up, look us up online. It's www.exwsystems.com. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about the systems we do, uh, carry and so forth, even for commercial swimming pools, uh, pH control and so forth. But we're going to do some more videos later on coming up in a couple weeks here. So a little bit, little by little, we'll teach you a little bit more about uh, chemistry and so forth. But thanks again for watching. Mike Geyer Exceptional Water Systems.